Hey, I'm JB and I'm here to help you level up your editing game. And today we're talking about proxies. What are they and how can they help you really start to edit faster, even if you have to do a little bit of setup on the front end. But before we start talking about proxies, let's go back a little bit farther and make sure you understand Codex. Now I'm gonna use an illustration here out of real life. We have some people who are friends, some people who are enemies, and some people we would call frenemies. And the same thing is really true for Premiere as well. There are some video file types that it likes, sometimes it doesn't. And what differentiates that is what's called a codec. It's how these files figure out how to compress huge, massive video resolution files down into something that can fit on an SD card or solid state card or whatever your camera is going to be using because it can't normally, unless it's a special camera, handle these massive file types. So that codec, that language that helps do the compression on it, doesn't always play well with Premiere. So let's take Apple ProRes, for instance. That codec was designed for editing. It flows like butter in almost every single editing program out there. It's great. So think of this as the best friend, as the VIP access person coming into the party. They get access to everything, the rope line, the red carpet. Premiere just rolls it out all out for them because it trusts it so much. Now, on the other hand, we've got H.264, another pretty pretty good one. It usually handles pretty well in Premiere, but it doesn't get the VIP treatment, but it's out on the dance party, it downs floor, and it's having fun, and it's, it's kind of mingling with everybody, and there's not too many hiccups, right? And then there's DJI. DJI, I don't know what you did. You were drunk at, at Adobe's sister's wedding, if you crashed a party that you weren't supposed to go to, I don't know what you did, but you make Adobe so mad and I, my timelines just clog up trying to play anything. You are a frenemy in this situation. Now the positive of all this is you're not locked into that forever. You can actually transcode that to another codec back to ProRes or whatever. And I have to, and I actually do that every time that I use Mavic footage from a drone footage as I convert it over to ProRes. You can do that with anything and it'll play nicer inside the timeline. But sometimes you've got these massive 8K files that are huge, or maybe you're using Red Raw and you wanna take advantage of all of the capabilities inside of Premiere to affect the master files in it. Or maybe you just don't have a lot of hard drive space because those Apple ProRes files are really big. What are you gonna do then? Well, there is another solution and that's using proxies. And so proxies, what they are is they are intermediary files. They are really low resolution files that you use just to edit with. You're not gonna punch this out into the final version, but they're like 720p, maybe 1080p files. And then once you're done, you bring back on the original files and you send that off to color grading or you just send that directly to exporting out your final version. But these are just intermediary files you're going to edit with on the offline then send it to online for color grading. And what's really nice in how Premiere set it all up is there's the thing where you can turn on the proxies or the original media files back and forth with a single button called the magic proxy button. Now it's not called that, but I call it that because it's amazing. So let's go into setting up how we do proxies and then we'll get to the magic button in a second here. So here we go. You're gonna right click on the footage that you wanna create proxies of, and then you're gonna select proxy create proxies to get started. Now you need to choose your flavor of proxy for this. I normally select QuickTime, the 1280 by 720 Apple ProRes proxy. Now choose where you wanna put it. I normally just select next to original media here too. It's easier to relink if that's an issue down the road. Now it sends the job over to Media Encoder to start creating the files and you're done. Well, not quite. You gotta activate the magic proxy button. I love saying it like that. So go to your program window and you need to add the toggle proxy buttons to the bottom of the window and then you need to activate it. And boom, every time you toggle that on or off, it's gonna go back and forth between the proxy and original media. Now, if you look in the program window, you can see a little bit of a difference when you turn it on or turn it off. But you can see it more often if you've got red footage and you've adjusted the master file color options in there. And then you're gonna see a little bit more of a difference when you go between on and off. So here's an example. You can see some 8K footage 
and the whole time I won't even play. Nothing is moving. It's so choppy right here. Now, when we turn on the proxies, suddenly it's operating really, really nicely. This is exactly how the proxy is supposed to work. And what Premiere does is when you go to export your final video, even with the proxies turned on, it's going to use the original source material, the original source file. So every time you export out a screener, even that final resolution, you don't need to worry about, oh, did I turn it on? Did I turn it off? It's going to automatically send out the original footage as the edit no matter what. So that's great. And you don't have to worry about then going in later on and relinking to the source material because of using the proxies, which you kind of have to do in other programs. So here's a couple power tips for you. One is that 1280 by 720 built-in preset right there that it's using, that's really meant for 16 by nine footage. So if you have something at a weirder aspect ratio or a wider aspect ratio, it's gonna kind of squeeze the image and you gotta create a custom preset for this so let's go over that so go into media encoder click the plus button to create an encoding preset title it something whatever you want to to help you understand but then call it export and choose prores proxy for the codec we want to get it to 720 or 1080p so that's low resolution now hit the plus button again and choose ingest setting you're going to want to title this same thing as before but instead of export do ingest under preset, choose the export preset you just made. Now inside of the media encoder where you see all of your presets, you're gonna right click on the one you just created and choose reveal preset and file. We're gonna need this in a second here. Now jump back inside of Premiere and go to create a new proxy. But now when you go select what setting you wanna use, click new ingest setting, navigate to where the new one you just created is by if you have to jump back over to finder, find that and now add it in. Now you've got your custom ingest setting that won't add the little bars to kind of squish the image. It'll look exactly the same as the original footage, at least scaled wise. That's how you set up proxies. That's the way they're supposed to work. It's gonna make your life a little bit easier, no matter what kind of size files that you're working with. And you don't have to worry in the long run of having to find the original source media and bring it back in because Premiere has made it so simple with just that magic proxy button. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe now. We've got so many more videos coming down the road that I know is gonna help you level up your editing game. So thanks for watching.